Plugin of the week is the dangerous BAXEQ brought to you by the Plugin Alliance. And uh, so this um, is a modeling of the hardware uh, by Dangerous, uh, B-A-X-E-Q. Uh, B-A-X is uh, Peter Baxendahl uh, design uh, from the 1950s. And what was so famous about his design from that era is he created an active equalization circuit where all of the equalization circuits uh, that we know of anyway at that particular time were all passive circuits. And why, when you look back historically and you look back at all of the old equalizers like the Pultex and things like that or, or uh, from Abbey Road, um, uh, the curve bender, all those were passive EQs. Um, and that was sort of a, a design that I'm not sure if it was easier to build, but it was uh, one that was very powerful in what was being used in mastering and um, uh, for in particular for that type of work. Now, on this end, this takes that Baxendahl principle, which is essentially a, a very soft EQ. What that design ended up becoming were bass and treble controls for stereo systems, and that's primarily where it was used. So um, that fundamental design actually also works really well in mastering situations, and that's the idea of this plugin. So uh, what you have on this end is you have a, um, a high-pass filter here. You have a low-pass filter on the other end, so you can kind of uh, work um, with these different settings here. And then you have uh, two shelving EQs, one for the low end and one for the high end. So if, for example, you were uh, boosting uh, something on the order of 84 or 96 hertz, that may extend all the way up to like 1 or 2K by the time you get to the end of the shelf. So to give you an idea of this being sort of somewhat like a tilt EQ, although technically it's not a tilt EQ, but you're getting this slow, very uh, gradual buildup uh, to the peak point when you actually boost or attenuate. You'll notice that the boost attenuations are not very broad. It's like plus minus five dB. So you're not dealing with uh, necessarily an enormous amount of, of gain on that end. So I'll just zoom in here to make it a little bit easier to see. And um, you can operate it in MS mode. Otherwise, it works in a standard left-right. You can link or unlink the two sides. So the MS mode is not something that exists in the original unit. Uh, if you bring it up on a mono channel, you'll just get it as a straight uh, configuration um, like this. Otherwise, you can kind of switch it in and out of MS mode to kind of make it work the way that you want. So what's interesting here is that this is uh, a great design. These filters, you notice, are below our frequency, infrasonic. Uh, below our hearing range and uh, so which is kind of cool because you can get rid of sometimes extra information that's down there that causes subs and low frequency drivers to kind of overwork and you can't hear them anyway so it's not really helpful so we could start by filtering off a little bit of that stuff And that can sometimes uh, um, serve to really tighten up the sound on the low end. So if we wanted to kind of bring in some, well, actually, let's start by bringing in a little bit of air first. We'll go to the top end. So we also have a, a out on on the cutoff, and you notice that it starts at 70K, which is pretty crazy. So uh, if we bring this down to a more reasonable level, part of this um, is in uh, preventing some of the uh, perhaps artifacts that may exist by doing a level boost here on the high frequency shelf um, that extends up into that range and can create other problems. Rippling down lower. I'm not sure why I would hear a difference between 70 and 28, but I do, and I kind of like it there at 70. So let's kind of uh, work in here with a shelf, and I'm going to start with an 18K thing and see if we can add and bring in a little bit of an air on the high frequency end. What's really amazing is that that the softness of that curve and one of the real powers of this is that it's so smooth 
you almost wonder if you're hearing it. <laughs> and and so when you really pay attention, like you think, oh, it's like, oh, I have to, you know, really crank it up because it's so smooth. You get really no phase distortion from it. It's really, really powerful on that side. So let's see if we can do a, um, a little bit of a boost on the bottom end to kind of um, focus or tighten that up. Maybe I'll just kind of stay down low here and kind of bring this up. So all this works in 0.5 dB steps. Uh, that's sort of a mastering type of thing where the hardware is easily reproducible. So let's let's hear what this is like. Come here. And then here, if we wanted to switch to MS mode, I could go ahead and I could take this and uh, unlink the sides, excuse me, and then uh, uh, and kind of take away some of that same amount so it focuses more of that low end in on the um, on the center signal. Very powerful <laughs> and and subtle, really clean and 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 beautiful sounding. Like a great way of just balancing high low frequencies uh, and working those two together. Um, it's not designed to really gut mid range <laughs> or do any of those types of things. It's more of just like a tonal overall tonal balancing. Very smooth, very clean, really powerful. Great emulation of this, and this is like a, a classic. Um, mastering uh, EQ that uh, you need to have. The more I kind of uh, dig into this one and get to use it, the more I realize that I want to <laughs> include it in all my mastering work. Really, really good emulation um, and a very powerful one uh, from the Plugin Alliance. So there you have it. Not a whole lot more to it than that. It's pretty simple. Other than that, you have your output uh, level controls here, which can be linked together. Uh, you can adjust mid-side balances and all of that sort of thing. That sort of comes along with the program. Um, otherwise, uh, mastering grade EQ and a great plugin from the Plugin Alliance. It's the dangerous uh, B A X E Q.